Today, it's the 2022 Rockwood Mini Light 2513S. Welcome back. Today we are at Travelland RV in Kelowna, BC, Canada, and we're going to get to take a look at the 2022 Rockwood Mini Light 2513S. And I'm just going to tell you now because it's a, the exact same trailer as, let me look, the Flagstaff Ultralight 25 BSDS. So for those of you who are looking at Rockwood and then looking at Flagstaff and going, but I don't know the difference, don't worry about it. There isn't any. So either one is great. So we're going to take you around on an exterior tour, we're going to take you on the inside and of course we just want to remind you about all the great things that are in the description. You can get the timestamps and the currency converter and an RV research resource that we use and you can use too. And of course if we're providing you with any value we'd love it if you'd buy us a coffee and all those links are in the description. And today we want to thank Bruce and yeah, no, we're thinking about you out there. Thanks for the coffee, we appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Now, let's get on with the tour of this particular trailer. So what I thought was unique about this is that it is a mini light. So we'll go over all the numbers, but it has two slides, kind of nice. At the front here, you get the nice fiberglass cap with a little bit of lighting in it and the automotive glass window, which I do love having a window at the front. The uh, rock guard is the plasticky kind of stuff, um, but I like the level that it's at. Batteries are there, two 30 pound propane tanks, electric jack, loving all of that. Um, coming around to this side, let's go down first. You do get uh, four electric stabilizer jacks. Phew, gone are the days of having to use the drill. Not that that matters, but for some folks it just makes life easier. So there's the buttons for that. Here is your fresh water tank fill. Interesting that it's up here and we did do some investigating and that tank is in there in kind of a weird spot under the bed. But anyways, we'll show you on the inside. Uh, you do get two slides with this uh, first one being quite small and it's on a Schwintech system. Has the uh, flaps here and the bulb here. And if you go up, ta-da! You're getting slide toppers on this trailer. I love that. As well, you can see the rain rail and the spout, so that's all good. Let's see what's in this compartment. So these do have magnets and a nice pass-through that is lit. I'm looking for a vent. Not seeing any particular venting into this area, but it is quite a big uh, pass-through storage and it's big this way and this way so you can fit a lot of bigger bulkier things in there so I do like that now also down here you'll see this white um, drain and pull and that's for your fresh water so that when it's time to uh, clean out that tank or let whatever's in there out it's just fresh water pull it uh, the underbelly on these is fully enclosed and I do want you to have a look at that because there's something different here that I don't have an answer for so if any of you do I'd like to hear it but this underbelly has some small venting areas in it so I'd like to hear about that if any of you are owners or uh, have information on that. Then while I'm down here Let's take a look at this other slide. So this would be the main slide, and this is an electric rack and pinion, and it too has the slide topper, so I'm happy about that. Okay, let's go around. Frameless windows, and to the back here is where your 30 amp electrical connection is, your cable, your satellite, your city water connection to hook up to the post and an antifreeze uh, port, so when you're doing your winterizing. Down below is where your sewer uh, hookup is with your gray valve and your black. So these valves are not enclosed under there. And then let's see what's at the back. You do get your spare with a cover on it in a really accessible spot, so I'm happy with that. And here's where your black tank flush is. It seems like it should be on the other side where all the workings are, but this is better than having it on that side, which we have seen in some instances. 
You also get a uh, receiver here, so I'll see what I can figure out for uh, weight on that. Outdoor shower, up at the top is the backup camera, and then you also get the ladder. And then you've got this, and we figured out that you can pull this little pin and you can pull this around, and this is where your grill can go, which is the perfect spot for it, because down here, is where your propane quick connect is and that all goes lovely with a new kitchen <laughs> there you go thanks bob <laughs> so you get this outdoor kitchen which has a pretty big electric fridge and some decent storage a light fixture that with a little jumping I could actually reach. A little counter with some electrical, a little sink, taps, and then this pulls out this way and you get a two burner propane stove. Like this is, if you've got that grill over there and the stove here, all of this, like this is a very functional outdoor kitchen. You could be a one-man one, one man cooking machine. You are, honey. You are. So, and then, as you're coming back... Oh, you're not going to get that? No. <laughs> well, let the salesman have that. <laughs> so here, you can... This is that little rail where you can put your um, table on. This is a little table that comes with it. Now, we had a question about this little table. So for you owners out there, please let us know what you think. But take a look at how it attaches. So it goes on to this little rail with this piece underneath that just sets up against the wall of your RV. <laughs> so the concern we have there is like, is that not marking up the wall of the RV? Or I could just see this being slid up and down on here. I don't know. I just want to know how do you people feel out there about something being up against the side wall of the RV? Just a question. Okay, uh, here's another switch for those stabilizer jacks, TV, electric, sorry that's not a TV, <laughs> it's the place to plug your TV into. Here is the holder, the mechanism that you can put the TV on so that you could have your outdoor TV. Plus you've got speakers up there and you do get a great sized awning with its LED lighting so you know I love all of that. Uh, let's take a look at the tires. These are aluminum wheels on the Goodyear. Ooh, these are scuff guard. What does that mean? <laughs> ST205 slash 75 R14. So you get all that. And of course, go to the construction video. I'll link to it at the end where you'll learn a lot more about the axles and all that. Okay, come up to the front. Uh, so here's the button to uh, do those stabilizer jacks and then let's take a leather look at the pass-through storage at the front because we've learned something interesting. You gotta love this big space. What we've learned is that they have added a drop frame to the front of this chassis so that this can be such a, a big opening and it is lower. So the inside floor of this rig is here but the drop frame allows the opening to go down. And you can see that underneath here, where you can see the extra piece of frame that is attached to the chassis frame that allows this piece to be lower than the flooring system. Who knew? I think that's a great feature and it gives you all that extra space. Let's talk about the steps first. Okay. So here's the handle of the door because we all know I love these stairs, but these stairs are no good to us if I can't reach the handle of the door without them to get them out. But I can, so that's good. I love my steps here and I get a friction door and it has a bumper and it has a clip. This door's not going anywhere. And let's take a look at our screen. Ta-da, that's a screen. And you get this handrail. Let's take a look at the... Okay, so you are getting the screen in the window, in the door. It's up to you. If it were there, we'd live with it, probably never use it. 
If it weren't there, we wouldn't spend a dime on it. That's our personal opinion. You know everything we tell you is our personal opinion based on the research that we do, right? It's probably been a long time since I told you that. <laughs> Come on in, let's take a look at what's inside. Alrighty, the 2022 Rockwood Mini Lake 2513S. I don't see a ton of changes in like decor and that kind of thing. It was good last year and I think it's good this year. It's light and I think everyone's gonna like that or most people. So right here at the entrance, there's a few things to show you. One being that there's two good sized drawers. So I like those and a door to nothing. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably an access to something. I'm not sure what, but they wouldn't have put a door there if they didn't expect you to access it. Here is your uh, radio, USB kind of sound system, and here is all of your controls. So you've got your light switches, your awning, your um, slides, your water tanks, that kind of thing. Um, and then you've also got your ducting in the furniture, which I do like, and some electrical there. Uh, coming up over here is this lighter gray beige cabinetry, which I do like. And these are strong doors with quite a bit. I mean, it's not deep, but quite a bit. So, I mean, you could make this pantry. I mean, you can make it whatever you want, but it could be pantry. And below it is a very cute little uh, electric fireplace, which I love. Like this would heat up the space nicely when you're plugged in. So I like that a lot. And, and, and check that out. So you are getting the uh, solid surface countertops in this kitchen with this nice flip up. So I love that. And there is also uh, more heat ducting down there. I can never get enough heat ducting. Or I think this is quite a nice kitchen, really. You get decent strainer and uh, cutting board like you could actually cut on them so I like that this is a big sink um, I'm gonna say that I feel a little jammed into the stove when I'm standing in front of it but not a deal breaker nice stainless undermount deep sink nice uh, taps these are black and they go with the the uh, pulls on the drawers and things like that so I think that is great and then you do get um, the cabinet or countertop here with the pop-up electric and USB you can see yeah. I'm using it it works great <laughs> but it gives you that little extra I love this window it lets in a lot of light and both sides open so that's good air. You've got the TV here, I'll figure, oh, it's a 32 inch, it says so right on it. <laughs> so there's your TV, ooh, microwave. Magic Chef, way high, way too high. So definitely a stool, cause that's a safety concern for me. Uh, range top is good. And then we come down to the Magic Chef stove. So this is a glass topped three burner propane stove with a pretty decent sized oven. I'm liking that. Very nice. While I'm down here, let's take a look at the drawers. So it's got the little uh, thing for your sponge or washcloth. Uh, three more smaller drawers. Oh, this one's definitely deeper than that first one. And so there's three of those there. And then moving over to here, two quite big ones. I like those. Those are very nice. And on top of that, look at this. Someone left their stuff. This is a great chunk of countertop. So when you think about this kitchen and doing prep and things, this is a great chunk. There's a piece there plus that fold up. Love it. Up here. Uh, more storage. It's a little bit high, but still usable. Um, have to put some type of wire shelf or something in there. So yeah, I'm liking this whole kitchen and you need all this countertop. That's for sure. Electricity here. How about lighting? So the lighting's going to be just all in the roof ceiling. Over to this side. Two more big storage. So 
I mean, you can choose to do whatever you want. Do you want this to be your pantry or do you want that other one to be your pantry? Whichever you like. What's in here? Oh, another access panel. Okay, and then into the main slide is your refrigerator. Gosh, I love this. Look at the height of it. <laughs> I just love that. So, this is big. It's like an eight cubic foot Dometic uh, gas electric. So I do like that a lot. And it's convenient and it's in nice space. Then you move over to your theater seating. Um, so this is the standard. This is what we see in the Rockwood Flagstaffs all the time with the bells and whistles. If I can try. Oh, got it. There you go. Uh, so, you know, I like the fabric. I've said that before. There's a little uh, thing in here to put my book or those kinds of things. Let's see what's over here. Yeah, so you got your drink holder. You got the little plug-in USB. I like all that. Uh, let's check out the windows. So we get uh, one uh, darkness roller blind. And here's something I don't get. <sighs> These are great. They're in the, in the slide, so they're lower. I mean, I still have to kneel on here, but that's not a big deal. But why do they open like this? Oh, this one at least goes all the way down. I just don't know why they open like that. And this one, then, can only go that far because it's up against the, the uh, box for the window. So... The other ones aren't as bad. No, the fact that they fold right down is is better but i still don't understand why they don't go up like i just feel like i have to fight that when i'm trying to put stuff in anyways great to have the storage but it is a small opening but it does go all the way through so there's that i guess you don't need struts if you do it that way i guess that's right. true so yeah. maybe that makes it less expensive i don't know what's the cost of a strut i do like these window boxes and this is new i haven't seen this before it's kind of a a creamy fabric with a wood-like trim on it so that's new anybody see the problem here for me <laughs> where's the table right there's no dinette there's no as far as I could see in my research no dinette option so the table it's back here not the end of the world. It's the fold-out table, right? So you pull it out from back there, and then you pull the legs out, and then it sits here. Again, the problem for me is I'm sitting back in my theater seating, and my table's way out here. Or I have to hoist myself forward to sit on the edge of my seat to use my table, which really doesn't work at all for Corey and I because we are actually working in our rig all the time. So the I couldn't just sit like this and work on my computer. So that's why theater seating doesn't work for me. If it's not your, if you don't have the same issues as us, this could be great. And that table being back there, uh, because it's portable, it could go outside, it could be used in different ways. Um, and when you don't want it, because a lot of folks, hopefully you're in great weather places, <laughs> would, uh, have a table outside that they eat at. So I get all of that. And then this is just your uh, reclining TV watching spot. So I do get it. And that's why we're always talking about wants, needs, and priorities and pros and cons, because those are things that are different for everybody. So we're gonna help you with that more and some things that we've got coming out soon. But we just wanted to talk about that because what's right for Corey and I could be completely different for you. While I'm here, can we talk about the slide flooring? Is carpet. And I wish they would go away from that because we see it in others. Uh, where did we see it last? It was in a Flagstaff classic, I think. Don't quote me on that. But it was one that we saw recently where they didn't have the carpet and I was so much happier. The vinyl is really nice. The floor is uninterrupted because they've ducted it through the furniture. I just, I love that so much more okay while we're there then we need to go up so within the ceiling we've got led lighting speakers ac ac ducting 
Yeah. And in the slide, you've got a decent enough, bright enough light, but it's um, going to be operated from here. So that's good. OK, let's move forward into the front of the trailer. Come on in. It's the bedroom. I think it's a nice bedroom. There are pros and cons, of course, as there are in every single RV. Um, one of the things I really like about this particular bedroom is that it has a slider door, two slider doors, because Corey went in one and I went in one. So I'm happy with that. Um, you get this TV in here right at the end of your bed, if that's your thing. And this bed will be a queen bed under that beautiful window. So I want to show you on the bed size here, this is as far as I can go for walking. So it's not a true walk around bed. You can get just slightly down the end here, um, but that's the only space you have, which is not bad. Makes it easier for making the bed, but this is as far as you go. And then you've got these uh, carpeted box areas, which when I climb up on, I have to go quite far, like up to here to get to the fabulous, out of this world size nightstands, which have 12 volt USB and electric. So I'm loving all of that. Um, it's okay, I made this bed because <laughs> I wanted it to look nice for y'all. So I made this bed and I did find it a bit of a pain in the, you know what, because I had to, I had to climb up here to do it. Now, is that better than uh, uh, this is definitely better than uh, a bed up against the wall or in a corner. So we have to take that into consideration, but it's not as good as a fully walk around. So depending on you, uh, that could be a thing. There you get the pleated blind in the front window, which I love, love, love. And up here is quite a bit of storage. Let me climb on the bed and I'll show you over here too. So we've got quite a bit of storage. It goes all the way along. And then because this is a bit of a different floor plan than we've seen, uh, you get this other little slide in the front, which ow, has us in this closet. So Obviously, from in bed, I could reach my clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I were standing where they intend for you to stand, down here, I could still reach it quite well. It's quite a bit of space. I could reach the hanger. Of course, these are not my favorite hangers, but I could reach everything. And then there's a uh, shelving system here. Over there on that side, the nightstand is also large, also has electricity with a drawer. And let me see here, another closet with a rod. So that's good. Now, let me just show you what's under the bed. So see, I'm able to go back and forth quite easily. First of all, this is super light folds up and it's on a strut, but you can see that it definitely is not the full kind of space under the bed. And that's because I think there's a water tank in there. So anyways, you get small amount of storage under this bed, but storage is storage and we'll take it wherever we can get it, right? The drawers too, right? Oh, right. Okay. Let me show you the drawers. I'll show you on this side, but there is one on each side. There you go. So there's, there's a drawer on each side like that. So you do get lots of bedroom storage and there was lots of storage in the kitchen. Now I want to go show you the bathroom. Come on. Cause it's over here at the back. Come on in. It's quite a big bathroom. I'm quite impressed with the size of it. Let me get in the shower, which also uh, I feel is, is quite a good size shower. So that's the, the width and the height with the little skylight. You get the one piece plastic surround. You get a one piece base. They're the click together. Um, and you get standard taps with the 
aquamizer system. So that's to save on your water. Then you get a three piece textured glass door. Very nice. I like that. Oh, here you're getting a lot of countertop space. I'm surprised at how much, but there's a lot of countertop space here. Small sink, um, better than average tap. It's the, the black sort of finish, um, and I do like that. Electrical, storage, a little more storage. So that's good. Let's go up, a little more storage. And this is, this is decent enough for the mirror height and more storage over to a uh, place for a hand towel. And holy cow, holy cow, look at that. That is a lot of storage. Holy cow. We've seen that in one other trailer a long time ago. I want to say it was a Winnebago, but that's a lot of storage. Okay, what do we get for a toy here? Porcelain, foot flesh, lots of room. Where's the toilet paper holder? I guess you put it wherever you want. You could easily put it here and it wouldn't be in the way. There is ducting for heat through the wall down here. And up, we've got LED lighting and a max fan up there of which we're gonna have to get a broom or wooden spoon to reach the button because I don't see an actual uh, button for it. But this is a pretty big bathroom with a ton of storage. So really, I'm happy with the storage in the bathroom. I'm happy with the storage in the kitchen and I'm happy with the storage in the bedroom. Okay, let's talk about the Cracker Barrel Factor. So this being the main slide and so it's going to come out, oh, how far? It's coming, it's quite a deep slide. So it's coming to at least here. So my thoughts are, you're going to be able to come in the door. You'll probably be able to squish through here. You'll be able to sit there. You won't be able to have the table, but hey, you could flip up. Oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> and you could eat at that. You, once you squished through there, you'd be able to get to all of this. This opens the wrong way. Do you think it'll be covered? Yeah, I do. I think it's coming out to about here. Oh, yeah. So unfortunately, bummer, if this had had a slider door or it opened in, you'd be able to get into the bathroom. Even if it opened with the hinges on the other side, you might be able to squeak, you might be able to squeak in there, but it would be pretty tight. All right, let's look at the Cracker Barrel Factor in the bedroom because it had a slide too, right? So the only thing about this slide is it's just, it's very small and it's the closet area. So it's gonna come up right tight against the bed, um, but who cares because you can't use this entrance to the bedroom anyways because it's blocked by that slide. So you're gonna use this one over here on that side and you're gonna crawl into the bed that way. So the only big problem here is getting access to the bathroom. That's a bummer because, you know, otherwise it could be completely doable. All right, let's take a look at the numbers. Now for the numbers on the 2022 Rockwood Mini Light 2513S, which again is the same as the Flagstaff Ultralight 25BSDS. <laughs> So I went outside and got my picture so that I could give you the exact info. The GVW came in at 7,660 pounds with the cargo carrying capacity coming in around 925 pounds with the freshwater tank full. So that, that's not too bad. And more numbers for you. The exterior length 25 foot 10. The exterior width is 96 inches. The uh, fresh water tank was at 54 gallons and then the black and the gray each are 30 gallons. The uh, front bed was a queen at uh, 60 by 74 and I have more. Oh, the awning came in at 18 feet. 
The air conditioning is at 13,500 BTUs and the furnace is at 20,000 BTUs. The oven was a 21 inch oven and standard is a 12 volt fridge, but this one had the gas electric. So I just want you to know that that's an option and we're starting to see that happening a little more frequently into the 2022s where, you know, in past years, gas electric, gas electric all the time. So they're now moving towards the 12 volts and, but you can still get the gas electric, it's just an option. And then there's that all important number here at Traveland RV in Kelowna. The price is 54,986 Canadian dollars and the currency and converters in the description. Uh, so we hope you liked this one. If you're getting it, we'd love to hear about it. If you already have it and have a few answers to some questions, we'd like you to please leave your answers in the comments section so that we can all learn together. And we'll hook you up with the construction video at the end here so that you can link to that or you can come along on another adventure or something like that. We love having you along. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and give us those thumbs ups. And of course, if we provided you with any value, link in the description, buy us a coffee. Thanks for hanging out with us.